There's not much trust about these days. I wonder how much you are willing to trust other people. Today's Gospel is all about trust. First, there is Joseph, the quiet man. Not a word of his is recorded in the Bible. Yet we know what he is like from his being a man of honour and his care of Mary and Jesus. But coming right down to it, how many men, discovering that her girlfriend is already pregnant, would marry her on the basis of a dream? There's no doubt why Mary trusted him. He is a man of noble character, refusing to make a public scandal out of her pregnancy. Joseph knew Mary too, and in the depths of his heart he trusted her. Of course, there were difficult facts to face, but it took just one mysterious dream to set Joseph's heart at peace. Then there's Mary herself. We know from Luke's Gospel that she puts her trust in the words of an angelic messenger, although few people are likely to believe her story, and she knows that to bear a child can only bring shame on her family. She trusted Joseph, and God too, resisting what passes for human respectability and common sense. You can just imagine the tongues wagging in that little town. Perhaps that is partly why Mary and Joseph chose precisely that moment to set off to be registered at Bethlehem, not simply Roman command, but an excuse to get away from gossip. Behind the human trust that we see so poignantly displayed in Mary and Joseph, there is, of course, something much greater, the eternal trustworthiness of God, and a word that can never be broken. God has total faithfulness in keeping the covenants made with humanity. It's not only on a completely different scale from ours, it has another extraordinary dimension to it. Once God gives his word, it immediately begins to achieve what it has promised. In fact, long before God had made a covenant with his own chosen people, long before he had plucked the Israelites out of relative obscurity and entrusted them with his laws, there was already a more ancient covenant in operation, the unwritten promise that God had made to all that he had created. You see a glimmer of it in the unspoken bond that exists between an infant and its mother and her total devotion to her child. And even that is only a faint reflection of God's faithfulness to his own creation. We see it standing in awe at the beauty of creation, we see it when human generosity breaks through the hardness of heart of the world. To contrast this picture of trust, we need only to look at Ahaz, the king, in the first reading. Ahaz was promised the sign that a royal child would be born to the maiden, as a sign that God would ensure the continuance of the royal line beyond the present national difficulties. Ahaz refuses the sign on the pretext of not wishing to put the Lord to the test. But in reality, he is trying to ensure that the ways of the Lord are in no way permitted to interfere with the workings of his own life and plans. Quite the opposite of Joseph, in fact. We are now preparing to celebrate the birth of Jesus, and mysterious and wonderful though the birth was, we have to say it was in a way the most certain event in the world. From the beginning... God has been as good as his word, and his coming as man was meant from the beginning. The word made flesh caught us by surprise, but it was always in God's mind to do this, to become part of his creation, to become one of us. God is asking us to renew our trust in each other and to build a world in which not only individuals but whole nations display a genuine care and concern for each other a world in which we are more concerned with our duties to each other than a fearful preservation of our perceived rights, which often neglect the corresponding obligations. But God is not only asking us to keep trusting each other even when we feel let down. We are being asked to trust in something much more sure and certain than a vague hope in human kindness. God is asking us to trust him, the one who makes eternal covenants, the one whose word is the guarantee behind every human word uttered in love. Only God's word, breaking into our world, can restore our credibility and put truth back into human speech. Only God's word can restore a fragmented humanity to wholeness and ensure that honesty and fidelity prevail in human relations.
The Gospel tells us that Mary bears a son whose name is Emmanuel, or God is with us. The knowledge that God is in our midst as one of us is the guarantee of true peace on earth, the peace that comes from living in his presence. As this season of Advent now draws to a close, may we all grow in honesty and in faithfulness, trusting in God and in each other.